get ready for the ultimate test. The comparison between the brand new Mustang GT S650 with a performance pack and a manual transmission pitted against the brand new Nissan Z. The engineers will tell you eh, these have been subtly updated, but marketing will promise you they're brand new. So which is it? Stay tuned and find out. The brand new Nissan Z, or is it? Well, this is one of the best reskinning jobs we've seen in modern history. Nissan did a great job on the exterior, drawing levels of heritage from the previous generation cars and giving it a modern flair. When you look at a paint color like this, where I physically had to buy shoes to match it because I wanted to be that guy, I wanted to impress a lot of men on the internet, and I have done that, I'm here to tell you that this exterior design definitely looks like a Japanese muscle car, Japanese sports car, and it is going to appeal, appeal to a lot of Nissan Z enthusiasts. They haven't deviated too much what they did in the history, and we did a video on this talking with the designers and engineers, and we know why they did it. A lot of this has to do with the fact they, didn't have, they did not have an unlimited budget to make this a brand new car. So things like the door panels on the inside are largely carryover from the previous car. They've improved some materials, but they've spent most of the design budget on the inside and giving you infotainment and an updated gauge cluster. They still wanted to make this feel old school, which it does, everything's physical. Even from the on-off traction control, you don't have to sit here and hold it for 20 minutes and go through 20 different drive modes to make it work. It's very simple, non-frustrating to use, and the technology implementation in here is not gimmicky at all. You're, you're literally switching in a sport, sport gauge cluster mode, you see your temperatures, you see all that. The infotainment is just there to listen to music and you can even turn off the screen. It's not a primary point of this interior space, and I think the car's better for it. Yes, it feels old, but in the modern age of cars, it's functional, it's purposeful, the visibility is pretty decent in here, and it doesn't feel like a coffin, something like the new Toyota Supra feels like. So they've tried to find a balance of usability, including the hatch space, which overall is pretty usable, but again, this is a two-seater sports car. It's not gonna be an everyday vehicle. So if you're looking for that car, that's not this, and you might have to consider the Mustang. All the input points are great. The shifter still has a solid feel to it. The pedal box is skewed more towards smaller feet. Not as great as the Mustang if you're a bigger person, but it feels like a sports car interior and that's the biggest takeaway. But let's head into the Mustang and talk about the pros and cons of that. The interior of the brand new S650 Mustang. That's right, this is all new. Well, kind of. The big thing that Ford wanted to do, and you saw this in our development video for the Dark Horse, is they wanted to appeal to a younger generation, get rid of some of that heritage, which meant putting a threaded screen in here. And a thread screen that is tilted towards the driver, it's supposed to make you feel more connected to the experience. That means moving HVAC controls into touch. It means giving you Unreal Engine software optimization using a GPU to real-time render a bunch of animations to make you feel like you're in the next generation car. And that's because the kids these days, they love their video game systems and they want people to feel like they're playing a video game or on their phone. Hey guys, it's Jack. Sorry to interrupt this idiot. Mr. Hotshot has no idea that the future is tech. Video game systems are driving massive innovation and Zoomers want things they remember from childhood, like phones and games. Let's be real for a minute, shall we? The studies show us the average 24-year-old is chomping at the bit to buy a $62,000 car loaded to the gills with real-time rendered screens and animations. These innovators want to drive a manual transmission Mustang to their favorite street, to their favorite store, very circular there, but a bicycle bar, it was an enhanced board, be very round, very hot fin, I'll say it, 
it feels very generic. That's the problem when you go to a threaded screen. Hyundai and Kia do it, Mercedes does it, BMW does it, basically everybody does it, and there's no differentiation here besides software experience. And to Jack's point, in the drive mode selection, you can't decouple or individualize what you want to do. So as you go past sport, you can't change throttle linearity and damper mode settings. They're tied into the more aggressive settings. So there's still work to do here in terms of customization, but overall, they've done a pretty noble job first attempt. All the other parts of this car largely carry over. Despite them changing materials and trying to make it feel better than it is, you can tell they didn't have a huge budget to, to redo this entire car. They said it right up front. So the storage is largely carry over in the doors, the center armrest, the cup holders, the trunk space, even the seats feel carry over, aside from maybe a little bit of material design. The steering wheel has been updated. It feels way more sports car. It feels less generic. And a lot of the, some of the switch gear in here feels less generic than the previous Mustang. And they've opted to give you a more traditional parking brake. Unlike the Z, however, that has a parking brake with a cable, this is a digital pull handle. It does have a drift brake that has software calibration to work with the ABS to give you that hydraulic drift brake feel. So there is some attempt at making this a little bit different than the competition, but things that the Mustang's always done well is it's designed for a bigger person. So like even the pedal box operates well for heel to toe. If you have a huge shoe like Jack, he wears a size 17. The guy is huge everywhere. The shifter feels much improved in terms of shifter design, the shift knob, and including the titanium knob and the dark horse. All the physical can mechanical connections to you and the, the driving machine are really good. It's just a matter of, can you stomach some of the technology in here? But let's head into the shop. We're gonna talk about some of the engineering. We're under two cars that have been reskinned and marketed as they're heavily updated. So we're going to, at least it's a fair comparison, honestly, yes. between the Nissan Z and the new Mustang. Well, the so. Z is almost old enough to drink underneath. It first, that platform and its first iteration was debuted in 2003. Wow. In the 350Z, and then it was heavily updated going in the 370. And of course, for the current Z, which many people call the 400Z, but Nissan just calls the Z, is been heavily refreshed and we have a documentary style film where you get to hear from the designers and engineers and we've put it in a comparison test with the Supra. So we're gonna very, very briefly walk you through the Z performance pack before we talk about this new 2024 Mustang GT. It's double wishbone front and rear. It has a limited slip differential. It has a twin turbo V6 engine and here's a dyno plot from when we dyno the last one. It makes pretty good power, it puts its power through either a six-speed manual or a nine-speed automatic, which is a JATCO Mercedes co-developed automatic gearbox, which honestly isn't that great. But the big thing is the platform, right? It's double wishbone. That's something that, at least from a geometry perspective, this Mustang doesn't have. Is there anything else you want to talk about? Yeah, the Z has been improved in several ways. It's mostly cooling. They've had to make major revisions to the cooling strategy because it makes so much power compared to the turbo. previous one. So they've changed the front end quite a bit. They've made some revisions to the manual transmission where they moved the slave cylinder to an accessible spot where you can easily remove it. There's little tweaks that they made here or there to the geometry of the suspension, damping, of course, damping and spring rates. But overall, to your point, yes, it's largely a carryover car with manufacturing improvements and improvements that they've learned on how to make it better and just left everything else to the aftermarket. Which brings us to the brand new, or not so brand new, Mustang, Jack. Yeah, so as we talked about in our Dark Horse piece, and if you want to learn everything there is to learn about this car, I suggest you watch that video. You'll hear directly from one of the v dyne engineers, interior, exterior designers, and a lot of the senior leadership. But what do you need to know? Let's start with the 5-liter Coyote. This is their latest revision of the 5-liter Coyote. The big thing from a mechanical perspective is this now needed to make the latest emissions rules, but it gave them an excuse to open up the engine. So the left-hand header has been radically, basically redesigned to allow it to flow better. You have new exhaust cams, you have a new oil pan for better windage, you get the dual throttle bodies and overall more engine output. Here's a quick clip of it getting dynoed by a very kind local shop, which we'll be doing some more work with in the future, but it's stated horsepower is 486 with the active exhaust. It's a six speed manual gearbox in the regular GT. It is a Getrag MT82. This is a gearbox that gets a lot of flack. I will tell you, 
it's a little bit overblown. From a suspension geometry perspective, you get aluminum in the lower control arms. The geometry, as the engineer talked about, has been slightly improved and revised. The big, big change is the MR damper strategy. If you option in the optional magnetic oh, ride cool. dampers. that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody forgot to uh, tighten that uh, tie rod and nut jam nut, Jack. How's that alignment been treating you? Oh, it's been good so far. Uh, Oh, great. <laughs> to tighten those down. Oh, don't worry about that. All right, back to the uh, engineering changes. So what about the steering? I know Ford has claimed they made some pretty big changes here, or subtle changes. Yeah, so the steering ratio is a little bit faster than it used to be. The big change is the E-Pass rack itself. They've pulled out some what's called NVH material out of it, and they've made it more rigid. The idea is to make the front end more direct and have better steering feel. I think the big letdown from the steering, as we're going to talk about in the drive segment, is the actual tires themselves. These uh, P0 Pirelli tires aren't the best. And when you compare this to the Dark Horse, which has the identical steering rack, I think the changes in geometry in the tires do lend to a somewhat vague feeling front end. However, I did drive a bullet back to back with this. And in comparison to that car, the steering is tighter and a little bit more natural in this car than it was in the prior gen s550 but it's not a huge night and day difference and you do have to drive them back to back what about magna ride calibration the mr dampers are noticeably better in this car i think while the hardware is largely carryover obviously it's still strut in the front multi-link in the rear and the mr dampers are optional on these cars but the ability for them to react front and rear they they allow the front and the back of this car to feel a little bit more connected this is still a gt or a Let's call it a highway do everything vehicle. It's not a track car, so it is still a little bit floaty. But the, the the connection of the front and the rear is better. And obviously, there are slight aero changes underneath, which we've talked about in the Dark Horse video, like these canards. This car is just a let's call it a variation on a theme. It is subtle improvements to an architecture they've already spent a lot of time on. Some of the deficiencies with the Mustang are still here. It's still a heavy car. Yeah. This thing's almost four thousand pounds, and in this era, while you could argue that is very very heavy sadly again as they know internally all their competition is gone yeah right if you want a two plus two manual v8 rear wheel drive car this is sort of the only two-door game in town and that's that's the sad truth about all this and you can tell like you know if you're on the design side like you have x amount of budget to work with where do you make the subtle improvements that aren't going to cost a lot of money like you know the under tray the spats to kind of reduce pressure and reduce the lift on the front end. I mean, there's little things they do, but then you look at the rest of the car, much like the Z, the Z is the same thing. Half of the under underbelly is uncovered, which is great in terms of service, but you know, the aerodynamics aren't there compared to modern cars. You're still dealing to your point with the weight. So this is always going to be fighting itself despite all that advanced suspension mm -hmm. technology with MR dampers. It can only do so much, but again, there's nothing else doing this, and that becomes the excuse for it, much like the Z. They're, they're trying to do unique things, and I don't know. So, Mark, let's go take both of these cars for a quick street drive. Sounds good. Takumi crafted Mustang for once, Mark, and you're driving. You're a big proponent of this car. Tell me why you like it more than the Mustang. I'll tell you why. Ready? I'm ready. <laughs> oh, it's a dance partner, Jack. <laughs> One of the things I love about the Rogue is it's, it has a soft, compliant ride. The Rogue? I mean, the Z. <laughs> <laughs> it, this car, when you drive it on the street, it feels like somebody purposely set it up to be like a 90s car. It has 90s car, like ride control, body control, motion forward and aft. You know why it feels like a 90s car though, right? <laughs> yeah, tell me, Jack. Because the architecture was designed <laughs> in the late 90s. <laughs> this car to me, as a street car, 
feels far more connected than the Mustang. It is an older car, and I think that's part of the, the charm of it, of course. It feels smaller, it feels lighter, it feels more nimble, and it's a stone's throw away from being a far more capable car with aftermarket work on the suspension and tires. As soon as you get a real alignment in here, because double wishbone, you get a good set of shocks, decent set of brake pads and tires, it's gonna go from kind of that boaty, old school feeling car to something far more sharp and edgy. And I I'm mixed because one of the things I like about this is it's just so casual to drive it. And the gearbox feels pretty good. The, the overall handling is decent. It's definitely skewed towards always going sideways, namely with these pretty nerf tires on here. There's, it, it's like the, the twice as expensive GT86 or GR86, right? Like it's got more power. It still has that wantingness to always go sideways on you. And I think that's what's fun about it. It feels like a very purposeful car in its simplicit, simplicity in terms of inputs, interior, there's almost no gimmicks. And yes, to your point, it's because it's, it's friggin' ancient. You know, they didn't have a lot of money to work with here and doing 25 screens and a yeah. whole bunch of drive mode bullshit. I, that's what I like about it. Yeah, it's a gimmickless car. And I know you're about to hit me when we get in the Mustang about the Unreal Engine and all that <laughs> other fun stuff. But at, at its core, and when I first drove this in Tennessee when we did our original video, the things I appreciate about this car is that you can get the front end to load up because it's double wishbone. The rear rotates fairly naturally, though there's some pretty bad secondary motions because it's so soft in the yeah. back end. I think the part that kills me, though, about this car, and we talked about it in our original Z uh, Supra video, <laughs> is that it's, it's like it should be really capable, and even on sticky tires, it's not. The fact that this and RE71 RS is, yes, the laps were done on different days, is slower than a Civic Type R on just Potenza Sports is disappointing. And that part of me, even though I don't care about lap times, does eat away at me. But I guess, Mark, it's time for us to drive a real car with a V8. Yeah, before we do that. Oh, I, yeah, well, yeah, tell I, me, Mark. I just, I do think that they, they went far too conservative with the setup of this car out of the box. It's it's going it's definitely great on the street, but it's the softness and suspension, the compliance, the ease to drive it every day is also what it hurts hurts it in its outright performance. And at sixty thousand dollars, when you have a four popper Honda front wheel drive car that's faster than this and feels more direct, and not saying that it's a better car, but th th I think they definitely went. The, the, the wrong way for a car like this. And I don't know how they're gonna correct it. The Nismo's not a correction of this, but um, again, it's left to the aftermarket. But I can't wait to hear you tell me all about the Mustang and how Dearborn has, <laughs> has fixed the Japanese muscle car formula, Jack. Well, dude, with all my Unreal Engine animations, I will show you what a real performance car can do. I'm back in my 5.0. I have my Fox body gauges. I've turned everything off. Why was, why was your burnout better than mine? <laughs> V8 mark, that's why. Feels like I'm on a, a big lake in a big <laughs> boat. Yeah, compared to the Z, and it's weird driving these cars back to back, and we will be doing a track comparison in the future with the Nismo and the Dark Horse. The GT and the regular Z are street cars, according to both the OEMs, is the way the front ends work on these cars. You talked to me off camera about it, and I agree. The initial turn-in in the Mustang is nowhere as sharp 
as the Z is, but the mid corner stability in the corner exit is much better. Yeah, this car, in, in, I think it all boils down to one thing, damper technology, where this car really starts to set and become more balanced is just a byproduct of having better damper technology. But in the slow stuff, there's absolutely no comparison. You cannot get over the weight of this car, how soft it is, how much you have to deal with the weight, and the strut suspension in the front of the Mustang is, it, it, it's funny because both of these cars are really trying different things, but the end result is so similar in driving character. They're both really compliant for the road. They're both really soft on the road. They're just going about it in two different ways. One of the questions I had, and one of the things people brought up is the steering of these cars. This and the Dark Horse, which we drove in a different video, have the same steering rack. And I think compared to the old GT, it's a little bit better. And I did drive a bullet back to back with this. The problem this has versus the Dark Horse is it doesn't have as aggressive as alignment. And the tires, I really do think this car is let down by the less sticky sort of like yeah, Grand they're... Touring Max summer tires that yeah. are on it. It just doesn't have the directness of the front end. And it doesn't weight up anywhere as well. No, it, it's for, for sure that the... The tires are a huge factor in this. You have far less grip to work with. The, the sidewall has more flex in it. And the damper profiling is softer on this car than the Dark Horse. And, you know, when you're dealing with a less aggressive lineman, you just have, you don't have as sharp of a front end. And it feels like there is 16 layers of foam between you and the front end of this car in slower speed maneuvers. But I think compared to the Z, because the dampers are far more sophisticated and better calibrated, we're in sport, so it finds this reasonable balance. I can put it in a track, it'll firm up even more, and then in normal, it's a completely fat dog. It's yeah. just a really, really soft car. I think when you want, at least in higher, like, twisty corners when you load up the suspension, I think it has a little less secondary motion yeah. than the Z has. And the other thing that I really like about this car, we talked about in the prior generation Mustang, is the brakes. The yeah. brakes, these big Brembos in the front, have good feel and so much overhead where the Nissan doesn't have that. And the big thing that I love about this car is the five liter. I think it's one of the best feeling, non-special exotic engines you can buy. It revs, it's not the most musical thing in the world, it's not all that refined, but it has so much charisma. Yeah, it does, and while, you know, when you drive these back to back, you realize this only is about maybe 10% faster than the Z, which is incredible given the, the displacement of this engine and the, and the power. disparity. It's, it's the weight, but, you know, it wins purely on the musicality of it, the fact that it's naturally aspirated, um, it has the character that the Z doesn't have, but where the Z really sells me over this is its size. You don't have to manage the weight and the fact that the front and the rear end feel like they're screwed together in that car. The transition between the body motions between the front and the rear are minimized compared to this, where you constantly feel like you're, you know, we have to purposely set up every corner for, okay, I have to brake, I have to wait for the body to set. You're constantly dealing with that with the Mustang because of its size. The Z does not have that and it's a better car, more of a driver's tool compared to this, yet it's still soft. Like it still gets to the same place of being that comfortable street car without having to deal with all this floppiness that the Mustang is and has become. Yeah, I, I think they are very similar cars in their spirit and their overall attitude, right? They're both cars that you could use every single day. The advantage that the GT has over the Z is it really can be your only car. Yeah. The, the difference is I think the Z is a smaller, more nimble-feeling vehicle, but the GT has that 5-liter, like, charisma. I think the gearbox is marginally better. And I think it's a car that, if you are going to drive flat out on a racetrack, is going to outperform the Z. Just because of the sophistication of the dampers, yeah. the extra power, the better brakes. I just also feel like the, the platform itself, because it's only 10 years old versus <laughs> almost 21 years old, feels a little bit more, I don't know, rigid. It feels like it has higher high-speed stability than the Z has. The Mustang GT, at this level, is just a set of tires short of being a really, really capable car. And with the Z being almost the same price, it's a set of tires, brake pads, dampers, 
probably a few other little tweaks here or there. So comparable that way, I think the Mustang is kind of the better car as much as I don't particularly like the weight and the size of it. it to me, I would, I would take the Nissan Z, but I'd also have to stomach the fact that it needs a whole lot of work to get back to that tight, like less floaty feeling car. Uh, whereas the Mustang and its damper technology and everything they've thrown at it is just pretty much ready to go out of the box at 60 grand, which is what you want. But, uh, you know, but I can do this too while I'm driving. Oh I yeah, can, I forgot. I can swipe the I, screen. I feel way more connected every time I'm spinning the car around while you're doing But this. I can change my drive modes to show all my Unreal technology. I can't stop looking at the animations, Jack. Uh, that's why I hit people in this car. <laughs> all right. With that said, Jack, let's head over to our next cars and coffee. We got people. Stop. Oh man! Oh, just, just can oh, we show me the, the rear three quarter? Can we, oh! Oh! <laughs> can we park and just go through the animations? Oh, of course, I'm going to spend an hour looking at these animations. Final thoughts on the Nissan Z versus Ford Mustang GT. Let's say this first. Huge thanks to Ben and James at Altima Raceworks. It's a performance shop here in Crystal Lake, and they were kind enough to let us dyno the Mustang GT. And also huge thanks to our Ford rep, Sam, and our Nissan rep, Josh. So what about the cars? Well, let's first talk about price. The Nissan as tested in this video was like $53,000, $54,000, and the Mustang was over sixty dollars And at the risk of sounding like an old man, when I bought my S550 Premium Performance Pack GT with rebates, I paid $34,000. Now, Look, when you're spending over $50,000 or well over $50,000, you should have very high expectations. That leads us into the rankings of both of these cars. And sadly, after wrestling with Mark, we both agreed that the Nissan Z came in second place. Let's talk about what's good about the car first. It feels much, much smaller to drive because it is. It's got a shorter wheelbase, it weighs less, and it gets into corners much better than the Mustang, and it's largely due to it being double wishbone. The con of the car is it has some high speed instability. It deals with weird secondary body motions. That's because the car from a suspension tuning perspective is deeply compromised. It's way too soft and the dampers are nowhere as sophisticated as what you find in the Mustang. The engine, the forced induction V6 is far less charismatic than the V8 found in the Mustang. And the interior space, while there's a lot less bullshit associated with gimmicks, it doesn't feel like a $53,000, $54,000 car. The Mustang comes in first place, and a lot of that's due to the 5-liter V8. We dynoed it in this video. It sounds good, it feels special, and it brings a lot of charisma to the table. The car is more usable. Well, yes, there's some gimmicky stuff with the interior, and you can argue it's less usable than it used to be, at least when it comes to not having physical HVAC. The car, for the most part, is a vehicle you can use every single day. It has higher overhead, higher high-speed stability. It's a better all-around vehicle. And of course, well, it's a Mustang. So with that, huge thanks to everybody for watching. I hope to see you soon.